West Coast Hotel versus Parrish involved a woman named Elsie Parrish who sued for back wages because she was getting paid less than the state of Washington's dictated minimum wage. Washington state had a minimum wage law that applied only to women. West Coast Hotel, her employer responded by saying that the Supreme Court had already said in 1923 in Atkins versus Children's Hospital that minimum wage laws, at least minimum wage laws for women only, were unconstitutional as a violation of the due process clause. They took liberty without due process of law. And this particular law was structured very, very similarly to the law in Atkins. There was no distinction. And therefore, since the law was unconstitutional, they did not owe back wages. The outcome in the Parrish case was that Parrish won as Supreme Court overruled Atkins versus Children's Hospital and declared that minimum wage laws for women only are in fact constitutional. Everyone kind of thought before Atkins that Lochner and liberty of contract was dead and the Supreme Court was going to be deferential to state police power regulation thereafter. So Atkins came as a little bit of a shock. So the Supreme Court went from a five to four majority saying that women only minimum wage laws are unconstitutional to a 5-4 majority saying that they are constitutional. First of all, the court said that there's no specific mention of liberty of contract in the Constitution, and therefore, while we will review laws that invade liberty to make sure they're within the police power, we don't give any special weight to liberty of contract. Second, we are in an emergency situation, and we know women are subject to more exploitation and lower wages than men are. So under those circumstances, we should defer to the state of Washington in having this law. And to the extent this overrules Atkins versus Children's Hospital, Atkins is overruled. And third, if an employer pays less than the minimum wage, then that employer will wind up being subsidized by the public. And that's actually unfair to the public. In his dissent, Justice Sutherland said, that the Constitution does not change with emergencies. If you want to change the Constitution, you have to amend it, that women have the same legal authority as men do, and that Atkins should be reaffirmed. West Coast Hotel versus Parish, in the end, is really about the last battle between the pre-New Deal justices regarding how deferential the Supreme Court should be to economic regulation that purports to be within the state's police powers. From the 1890s until the 1930s, or basically two lines of due process cases that fought a pitched battle with each other, there was a line of precedence that suggested very strong judicial deference to states' claim police power interests in regulating contracts. And there was another line of cases that was much less deferential to state police power regulations. And basically the court in West Coast Hotel versus Parish said, look, we have occasionally invalidated police power or purported police power regulations under the Due Process Clause, but those cases are actually the exception. The main line of cases are a line of cases going back to a case called Holden versus Hardy in 1898, which upheld a maximum hour laws for people engaged in the mining profession in Utah. And that line of cases says that if the state presents a plausible public interested rationale for the legislation that we're going to uphold it. And they've done so here. So we're going to rely on that line of cases. And it looks to us like in these particular circumstances, a minimum wage law for women is within the state's police power. The majority in West Coast Hotel, though, was willing to be very deferential to the states when they claim that women should be regulated in ways that men may not be or were not to be. And that was basically the dominant view of the Supreme Court until the 1960s. Mm -hmm.